Anyasayo Jairiam Kara Danita. Anyasayo Jairiam Rosa and Nidia. Today, Kara and I are going to talk to you about the male female interactions of Koreans in the social, business, and personal aspects. Dating is a social event. It's symbolic to the future, and dating equals marriage. You don't begin a relationship, you don't begin a date unless you're prepared to begin a relationship. Kearney makes the notes that dating may begin as early as high school, and an artifact of dating may be that a couple might purchase couple rings to show that they are off limits. People tend to date people within their own age group. This is done because they don't like to have too much of an age gap because of the whole filial piety, which we will discuss later. Proxemics when asking a woman out is that the requests are made in public. Women are always accompanied by a friend on a date. If they don't have a friend with them, then the man may take it as that they are easy. There is no kissing allowed on the first date, and even the first few dates, up to two months after they begin dating. A kiss on the cheek after two months is, is, is acceptable, and this is part of haptics. Koreans typically only date other Koreans. Inter relationship, inter, interracial relationships are frowned upon, and we're about to show you a clip on how a parent may um, react if they think their child or know their child is dating someone who is not Korean. My family is so excited to meet your family. They're going to love you, Shelley. Aww, I'm excited too. Just so you know, I'm adopted and my parents go out of their way to make me feel loved. Well, that's nice. Mom? Hyundai son! How are you? Very well. This is my girlfriend Shelly. Oh, very kind to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Around me get father. Dinner ready. Please have seat. <laughs> you didn't tell me your mom is a white lady pretending to be Korean. Isn't that great? They really love me. Now I summon father. my girlfriend Shelly. She is not acceptable. She not Korean. Uh, I know that, but I'm still in love with her. This yeah. never work. You are Korean and she is white. Uh, aren't you? Korean? Yes, we are Korean. <laughs> and you not. Well, you're not really Korean. You're just what? You think we Chinese or something? <laughs> Asians look alike to you? Get that! Get out of my house! Alright, Mom, take it easy, take it easy. They only act like this because they think it's going to make me feel more comfortable. Is Grandpa here? I have been here the whole time. <laughs> Grandpa, you're wise. Tell them that love transcends all. Yeah. <laughs> But not more powerful than bringing dishonor to your family. And besides, you cannot scoop vanilla ice cream with chopsticks. <laughs> Next, we're going to talk about blind dates. Blind dates tend to be ritualistic in the Korean culture, and they typically happen in a coffee shop. Sewating is when parents set up their children on blind dates. Movies are popular for dates once you've begun actually being in a relationship with a person. And unlike Americans, they still do not touch in movie theaters, and so it is not a place for hookups. Asians do not, I mean, Koreans do not disclose any of their sexual history because it protects the reputation of their past partners. The professional and business customs in Korean culture. Women are always inferior to men in the workplace, and they hardly ever excel. They'll mostly take a secretarial position or a minimum wage job. They leave work when they're married, and they're supposed to take care of the children in the house, and it's supposed to become a full-time job. Men always get better pay, and this is just a traditional custom in the Korean culture. According to haptics, men greet men with a bow or a handshake.
Women greet women with a handshake, and this is known as a gesture, a common gesture in the workplace. Men and women do not greet each other. This is shown as a public display of affection and invading someone else's personal space. Foreign women will instigate a handshake with a Korean man, but a Korean man must never, ever shake a foreign woman's hand. According to Vocalix, you would always address someone in the workplace by their title and their last name if you do not know them. For example, Dr. Wong. Your personal relations take place over precedent in the business aspects. You always address friends, close friends, by um, their first name as long as you have established a relationship with them. When departing a Korean, women will nod slightly, but avoid half sticks by not giving any handshakes. The prosthemics for men is that they bow at the waist, but senior and junior executives do not make eye contact, which is called gaze aversion. This is seen as impolite or as a challenge if the junior executive were to try to look down, look a, man, look a senior executive in the eyes. Workplace communication with the kinesics aspect is that when you're passing and receiving items, you hold it with the right hand and you support your right hand with your left hand while passing. An emblem is known as a gesture that represents something, and when you ask someone to come to you, it's an emblem when you place your hand out and wiggle your fingers towards the floor. The business attire of the nonverbal communication of the Koreans is that the men wear formal suits and ties, and the women dress modestly and do not wear tight skirts as they may be sitting on the floor. Women await for men to initiate conversation while doing this. Koreans avoid yes and no questions because they hate saying the word no. At the end of the meeting, if you receive a long bow from a Korean, it means that the meeting went well and the people were satisfied with the outcome. If you receive a short, quick bow, it's unhappy and that the meeting had no positive conclusion. In the personal family customs in Korean culture, they follow a very generational tradition and they follow filial piety. The father, as in most American cultures, um, they are seen as a ruler, a leader, and an active role in the family. When talking, they expect a mutual gaze from another person. The mother is a quiet, conforming type. Being over a man is very uncomfortable for her. This shows her sebatonic, psychological type. The mother is a housewife, and this is a traditional aspect in a Korean family. That is their full-time job. Most labor-saving devices, as in washers, dryers, and dishwashers, will be taken out of the home because she should be doing those things as her job. The family relationships show interdependence, subordination. Parents love the children. Children love the parents. Their roles are based on age and gender. The children are also ranked by age. The older, the better, and the older, the more you're respected. They, everyone has respect for elders, no matter if you're a male or a female. Younger siblings do not call older siblings by their name. If you're a young sister, you would call your older sister Ani and an older brother Opa. If you're a young brother, you would call your older sister Nuna and older brother Hong. In conclusion, the social aspects of Korean male-female interaction is that dating is serious and marriage-based. You don't begin to date unless you're ready to, perform a, to begin a relationship and also PDA is not allowed. In business culture in Korea, it is very traditional that men are over women in pay, in positions, no matter what. And it is seen as a very um, appropriate setting for them to be like that. And the personal aspect of Korean male-female interactions is that parents are superior to children and everything is based ranked upon age. And the younger you are, the more you have to respect anyone who's older than you, no matter what gender they are. We hope you enjoyed learning about Korean customs in the Korean culture.